Yes, students. So we'll start with the new chapter, mutual funds. Okay, so this is one of the simple chapter. We can finish it quickly. In one, uh, some of the faculty was in YouTube video. Somebody was telling that I will is the so simple chapter that uh, I don't want to do it. But since because you are complaining, you will complain that sir, faculty sir didn't do. That's why I'm doing. After hearing that, no. I developed one uh, Tassar uh, Manamba for this chapter. <laughs> okay, that. Actually, when I went through this, it was something like that one, initial version. Okay, then if you would have seen that, you would have said, sir, if you don't teach, even we are not going to study. You straight away on the exam day only you will write. It's a simple chapter. Followed, no? Ah, but the true interest, I, general, I got the interest into this particular chapter. When the returns came and then the conceptual questions were there when it comes to the returns okay then you will see it's a very interesting chapter and very small chapter also so what we are going to learn in this chapter introduction calculation of net asset value returns which is the most important thing here the neck of this chapter evaluation of mutual fund performance is fine sharp ratio and all we are going to discuss we already covered hedge funds is a very small portion involved here Okay, so hardly how many questions are there? 34, 30, 31 questions are there, 41 questions. Huh? What is the page number? Ah, I got it, got it. Okay, so what is this mutual funds? We know that units are the investment vehicles where the funds are pulled to invest in the shares, commodity, etc and don't need any, you don't need any explanation. Everyone will understand why mutual fund is needed and very fantastic tool of investment because see, actually we see that there is a lot of professionals outside, okay, and the thing in which we are not professionals, we should not get, we should outsource it, okay. This I learned in a very hard way. Mutual funds are fantastic. Day one of your salary, once you start getting salary, start investing in the mutual fund. Based on the liquidity, mutual funds are classified into open-ended and close-ended mutual funds. Now, what is the difference between open-ended and close-ended? See, open-ended mutual funds are not listed in the stock exchange. Close-ended are listed on the stock exchange. In open-ended, the fund itself provides the liquidity. Anytime you want, open-ended means it is open for any point of time. You can invest at any point of time. You can withdraw money at any point of time. And if you are going to invest, whom you are going to give? You give money to the fund. You want money, the fund is going to give you. In close ended, they are, this, that period is open only for a few particular period or month or days, like shares, like IPO comes, only for seven days it is open. After this, they will close. Now, they will not return you until particular time. So, in that case, it is going to trade it like, just like shares. Price is equal to the NAV, subject to some load features, which we will discuss entry load and exit load. Price depends upon demand and supply of the in the market. Because afterwards, the share, mutual fund has got no role to play here. They will publish their NAV and all. Here, uh, the people holding the mutual funds are going to trade. NAV is calculated once in a day. Prices changes in the real time just like the shares. Units are not like shares, but here units are like shares. Clear, no? About open-ended and close-ended. Now, that's the basic things about the... Uh, chapter of a mutual fund. Now calculation of NAV, how to calculate NAV? NAV or net asset value is the real worth of a mutual fund unit, balance sheet of a mutual fund mark to market on a daily basis. Mark to market means we have come across this word in derivative chapter. That means whatever, like fair value basis. I Every assets I do value at a fair value and I will find out the market value at the end of the day and find out its net assets. Now. So net asset value is equal to, and there are many specific mutual funds, huh? sector specific mutual fund, company specific, they involve only, they are focused only on those things. What is NAV? Asset minus liability, net assets, there are a number of things. Mark to market means, suppose if I have invested in some shares, okay, I will at the end of the day, I will find out its market price and whatever fair value differences are there, I am going to pass an accounting entry, I am going to adjust it. So, I purchased Reliance Industries at 1000 rupees. This is my cost. Next day, it became 1200. 
I'll pass an accounting entry. Reliance industry shares account debit to fair value gain. 200 rupees. So at any point of time, my market, my fair value of net assets represents the market price. And it is easier for me because I am a mutual fund. I don't invest in the plant and machinery, land, buildings and all. I'm not doing that. There may be some mutual fund, but primarily they invest in the stock market. So for me, I know my assets, list of assets, I know my prices. So I can automate it. Now selling price of a unit is called an offer price. At what price you sell? It means a mutual fund at NAV plus an entry load, some 1% or 2%, some load I charge. It's called an entry load. And suppose you don't want money, I'll give you money back. At what price? NAV minus exit load. It's same like uh, you remember in uh, Forex, commission is charged. Okay, we, if you want to buy, I will add my commission. If I want to, if you want to sell your units to me, I will deduct my commission and pay. Now let us go with the question number one. This is a practice manual question and your test your knowledge also it has come. The unit price of equity linked savings scheme of a mutual fund. That means they have different different schemes. Okay. Generally they were established as a trust private company and they have got different schemes. Growth scheme, this scheme, that scheme. Each fund will have a separate manager. The public offer price of the unit is 10.204 and redemption price is 9.8. Calculate the front end load and the back end load. Okay, so we'll do this. What is front end load? It is 10 minus 10.204 minus 10 divided by 10. Because a 10 rupees face value when I sell on NAV, I'll sell at 10.204. So what is my Front end load or entry load. You can also call it an entry load. It is 2.04 percent. Front end load or an entry load is 2.04 percent, and back end load or an exit load will be 2 percent. This is easy. Tell me, I have got a bid and ask. Where do I add the commission? Where do I direct the commission? Yes, you have got one quotation where bid and ask is given. And bank, and this is the intra inter bank. And there is a commission is there, no plus minus commission. Will I add commission to the bid or will I deduct commission from the bid? Where I am going to add, where I am going to deduct? Where is plus sign, where is minus sign? Commission. Bid you are going to minus. Plus, yes. Confident? Yeah, correct. Because when you are bidding, when this bid price, what happens? You are, uh, what, no, no, you think in terms of cash. What you are doing? You are going to buy the uh, dollar at this price and pay the cash. When you pay the cash, okay, you deduct your commission and pay. In case of ask, what happens? Ask is the price at which you are buying dollars. When you buy the dollar, you the bank receives cash, then I say give me cash plus commission because commission is in terms of rupee always. I don't know, will we? Okay, we will move on to the next question. Cinderella mutual fund has the following assets in the scheme of Rudolph at the close of business on 31st March 2004. Okay, at the end of some business day, there were four, four company investment the Cinderella mutual fund has invested in some one scheme was there in that scheme see mutual fund may be one entity it can be a trust it can be a company it can be anything now they will have different different schemes like segments like what we are no transport segment manufacturing segment that or one mutual fund might have only one scheme okay there can be scheme managers it can be bigger it can be sector only bank specific now, they are invested in four companies, they are number of shares and the market price. The total number of units, how many units they had issued 
or 10 lakhs. The scheme Rudolph, okay, so this is the scheme name is called Rudolph, has accrued expenses of 2,50,000 and other liabilities of 2 lakhs. What is my NAV? Okay, so we'll calculate NAV. So what is my value of the shares? You can write here. Sorry? Because that's your part of your cost, no? You have accrued liability, you didn't pay it, you have incurred some expenses, maybe office administration expenses. That's going to get which one? No, no. Exit load is see, see. I will calculate. See what is my NAV? Asset minus liability by units. This is my NAV. This is a pure NAV. Now, if somebody wants to buy this, I will not tell you at this NAV. It is NAV plus entry loan. No, somebody says, no, give me money. You I can see you have posted 10 rupees as the NAV. I say, I will not give you NAV. It is NAV minus exit. It's like a commission to them. Now, what is my NAV? It is asset minus liability. So, what assets you have got? You have got these many assets. What liabilities you have got? You have got accrued expenses and other liabilities. Which one? Uh, expenses you don't deduct. No? When you calculate NAV, you are not deducting expenses, right? You look only the balance sheet. And the profits what you make, that you may distribute as a income, dividend, we will see one by one. Point is clear, no? When I am looking at a NAV, net asset, the name itself suggests, it, expenses you don't consider, they, ah, they, they are going to give you an expense also. You are going to ignore it. Okay, so now you can do, what is that first thing, how to calculate NAV? You write the heading, calculation of NAV. One, value of shares. What are your value of shares? 25,000 into 20. 35,000 into 300, 29,000 into 380. This is the total value of mark to market at the end of the day. This is your value, right? So, total it comes to 2 crores. Yeah, 1 not required, 1, 2 you can give less accrued expense. 2,50,000, other liabilities, two lakhs. So you got a net assets of 4 crore 15 lakhs, 70,000. You got net asset of four crore fifteen lakhs. You got two crores. No? Twenty-five thousand into they are given no, here. Nairobi is twenty-five thousand into twenty. Thirty-five thousand into three hundred. This is at the end of the day. One minute. Oh, sorry, I, I believe it is a 4 crore, I think. No, no, 1 minute. It is not 2 crores. Huh? How much it comes to? 2 crores plus 1 crore 10 lakh 20,000 plus 1 crore 5 lakh plus 4 crore 20 lakh. This is total is 4 crore 20 lakh 20,000 minus 5 lakh. Done? Clear? So you divide this. So these many things not required, huh? these stories and all, because later we will see in RTP, MTP, they have done value of shares. All the values are added. Accurate expenses. Like this format, I do not need to go. 
so poco 15 70 lakhs divided by 10 lakh euros so your nav is 41.56 this is the net asset value at the end of that day which is mark to market now with all the values Is it? We will move to the next question. A limited 10 lakh units they have given in the question. They have given that Rudolph scheme have got 10 lakh units. On 1st of April 2009, Fair returns. What is this fair mutual fund scheme? Has the following assets and prices at 4 pm. They have got 5 number of shares, 5 type of companies. Now, MPS market closing prices are given. Now, number of units of the fund are 5 lakh, 8 lakhs. Calculate NAV of the fund on 1st April 2009. Okay. Now, assuming that on 1st April 2009, this is question number 3, right? I think this should have been 31st April, March. Huh? Or okay, no, no, you can take it because at the end of 1st April, end of 1st April, end of the day. Now, assuming that on 1st of April, HNI send a check of 50 lakh to the fund. Okay, that day what happened? Somebody sent one 50 lakh rupees check. What happened? My cash balance increased. This was my initial asset. My, for my portfolio cash also came. And the fund manager immediately purchased 18,000 shares of C. And the balance is held in bank. What will be the position of the fund? Now, the third question. Now, if on 2nd of April, second day, the market prices are all below, what is the new asset in AV? Yes. Okay. So, this question, the previous question was simple, right? I am just wondering if any question to be marked for practice. No, this question has already come for exam. Leave it. Next question, it has come. Okay, so how to calculate the NAV on 1st April? So we have got company, we have got MPS, total value, divided by number of units, you get NAV. Yeah, you can leave some space here because it's all administrative, right? Simple thing. Nothing to apply our mind or to sit and work out. We know that we have got a company and in fact, I can skip this. I can say value of total value of assets. In bracket only, I can write all these things. So, I got total assets 9 pro 52 lakh 38,000. Number of units is 8 lakh, which they have given. So, my NAV is 119.0475. Now, what happened? Somebody sent one check when at the end of the day. What I do? No, first of all, I should issue him units, no? I am going to issue him units for 50 lakh rupees investment. Now, have they given me entry load? Be careful because in exam, you may get entry load. Let us see in next question whether they are given. Okay, so first thing is they are not given me. So my job is simple. What I will do? How many number of units I have issued to him? And remember, let us do NAV calculation and all in the four digits. I can move further. Yeah, you can just note the final answer. Now let me calculate the number of units. How many? 50 lakh divided by 119.0475. I issue them 42,000 units. So my total number of units became now 8 lakh 42,000. And what did I do? I purchased 
with this 50 lakh i didn't keep with me i purchased shares of c so after purchase of c shares what is my present status what is my nav that's what they asked no then what will be the position of fund overall position is same for your uh, how much 9 crore 52 lakhs 38000 50 lakhs got added but the composition of your portfolio got changed at the end of the first day earlier it was only no cash in hand only five type of companies but your composition changed how how what was the total asset value before your acquisition before he paid 9 lakh 52 thousand 38 thousand 52 9 crore 52 lakhs now how much investment you did in c 18,000 shares into 264.4 investment in C 18,000 number of shares into 264.40 47 lakh 59,000 and how much is in your cash in hand now balancing figure 50 lakhs minus 2 lakh 40 so what is the total asset value and you don't have any liabilities sir they didn't say any accrued expenses and all. So, 101 crore, 9 crore, 52 lakhs, 38,000 plus 1 crore, 2 lakhs. Okay, 1. So it is a 10 crore. It is a 10 crore. One comma is me. Comma is missing this. I am just wondering what is this number? Ten crore, two lakh thirty-eight thousand. How many units you have got now? 8 lakh 42 that's why your nav comes to 919.0475 because it didn't increase and you should the units at a nav only clear now on 2nd april what is your position now what is your nav i hope it's clear it's simple right and if you see what happened here, somebody contributed an asset, there is no dilution. And proportionate number of units you should. If you had issued at a different NAV, is that the problem? But you issued the existing NAV only. So my total NAV comes to total net assets comes to 119.0475. What is my next day NAV? Please tell me. You need not write share by you can say total value of the assets plus cash in hand there are by number of units 8 lakh 42. Next day prices change no? next day prices change right ah, it's the third question second part of the question we are done now we'll move to the third part of the question okay what is my third second april nav so i have got all the assets now a, B, C, D, but C, number of shares got increased and my bank balance remains same. So, total assets will be 10 crore 27 lakh and my NAV and units also got changed here. So, what got changed is every values have got changed because of the change in the market price. But here quantity got changed and here number of units got changed. So, you got 122.075. You invested C, no? Previous day you purchased from 18,000 shares, right? Ah, these shares are like C. What is the mutual fund? Mutual fund means see, first two, one thing is you can go and invest in the shares yourself. Very risky. Why? Because first of all, you are not a professional. You don't know what is share market diversification you have got a very small amount if you diversify you will not get any returns only diversification you don't know that understand the concepts of it so what to do now it's like any professional huh? 
I can fight my case in the court. Why I go to the lawyer? So there are, they are the professionals. Now I go to a finance professional who has set up a mutual fund, who is going to collect a lot of money from small, small money from the investors, get a big money and do big, take a big bet. And they are very professional people. Okay, they are pure finance people. Follow. Now, whatever they collected from individual people, what they do? They don't keep in their hand. They invest in the shares. That's why it all depends upon what type of scheme it is. Like if they say growth scheme, then they will invest only in the shares which gives you growth. If they say dividend scheme, they will invest shares in companies like Karnataka Bank, which consistently pays 4 rupees, 40% dividend on the face value of 10 rupees. They are dividend paying stocks. All right, no? So it all depends upon what is that you are going to uh, like do with that money. So this is nothing but the value of the asset held by the mutual fund. It's like the value of the portfolio value of the assets held by the fund. That does not belong to any single person. That belongs to group of people. Now, if it was a company, what you would have issued to the shareholders? Shares. What is that value of one share? Is nothing but the net asset of the value of the company divided by the total number of shares. In mutual fund, the instead of share, you call it units. You call it mutual fund units. Which is also nothing but total net asset divided by the total number of units. So this total net asset belongs to whom? Entirely it belongs to the unit holders. In company you call shareholders. And this happens for open-ended funds because in close-ended fund, this trading you can buy, sell, that is not going to happen. Open means they are open at any point of time. Close means they were once they are closed, you cannot invest, go and invest. You want shares? Go and buy from somebody else in the market. Mutual fund concept is clear, no? So now we have distinction. This part, this is the total investment of shares done by the mutual fund, and this is for the units. This is for the owners. Yes, question number four, study material question, and this question has come in your examination also. Same as it is. Mutual fund has the following scheme. They have got the assets on 1st of February. Then they have given the second February. They have got six lakh units. What is my NAV? Assuming Mr. A submits the check of 30 lakh and the fund manager purchases 8,000 shares of M, balance amount is kept in bank. What is the position of the fund? Find the new fund on 2nd February. Easy, right? Maybe minimum six months in this must have come. Ditto. Huh? And this is the question 3B. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, obviously, because they can not the writing, spending time, we can, that's what I told you, we can move faster in this particular chapter. Now you understood why I was telling simple. A written part is very tricky and you have to understand, we have to spend time on the return. This and all will proceed, okay, you can note down the answer. So your NAV value, we can work out like this also, see, with one shot. What is your NAV value? And then there's 78.83. Where you don't write the number of shares value, or you can write value of the shares divided by number of units. One shot you can get the answer. No format required. Then what is your revised position? New units you are going to issue 38,053. Units you are going to issue for 30 lakh investment. So revised value will be 38,000 you are adding here plus 5 lakh cash in hand. So you get 78.8366, same. The next, what is my second February? You, these all values change, but here 38 lakhs and 5 lakh will remain and your closing balance 6 plus 38, 82.26. Done? Okay, so we'll move on to the next question. Question number five. A mutual fund made an issue of 10 lakh units at rupees 10 each on 1st of January 2008. Okay, first time you issued at a face value. No entry load was charged. That means if everything gets sold, then you will have 1 crore rupees in your hand. Okay, so we are learning of one mutual fund unit from its very birth. Now what happened? It made the following investment. That means it must have collected that full money. All 1 crore units must have been issued. So they invested in some equity shares, government security, debentures of unlisted company, debentures of some listed company. 
so total 98 lakh investors 2 lakh rupees remain in their hand during the year a dividend of 12 lakh rupees was received on the equity shares interest on all type of debt securities was received as and when it is due immediately outstanding was the immediately received at the end of the year equity shares and 10 percent debentures are quoted at 175 and 90 percent respectively other investments are at par no change in the value so equity shares were traded at one, uh, 175 we invested at 160 it became 175 and listed 10% debentures which are quoted at 90% of value discount now find out the nav given that operating expenses paid during the year amounting to 5 lakh what is going to happen here your cash balance is going to come down expense will not come in your calculation of nav but because of this payment of expense of the paid other item your cash balance was going to come down you received dividend you have got a cash you received interest you got a cash you paid some expenses so one cash balance will remain in your hand also find out the nav if the mutual fund had distributed 0.8 per unit as to the unit holders it made some income it has got cash balance in the balance sheet okay it find okay let us distribute some dividend to the shareholder unit holder is 0.8 per unit and find out that so there are two questions find out nav find out easy question 0.8 per unit rupees in cash yes for the second part of the question ah, that's called a bonus like bonus shares. it's like a bonus shares some feature exactly same that's why you know you have got one exception in uh, financial instrument for this mutual funds by default, mutual fund would have been a financial liability for you. In mutual fund, whatever you have got, you have it is by default, by the definition, if you go through a definition, it is a financial liability. So a mutual fund balance sheet will not have anything called an equity. If you go through a definition of the financial instrument. Mutual fund organization, company, if they are set up as a private company or a public company, whatever, limited company, in their balance sheet they have got mutual funds actually by definition it will fall within the liability it is not an equity so they have given one exception to the mutual fund even though it is a financial liability the the collects what you collect you know from the unit holder that is treated as an equity yeah i'll tell that let us proceed further interesting right that exception is there, I'll tell you about that. Okay, now first we'll calculate. They asked me what? Find out the net asset value per unit given that the operating expenses paid at 5 lakh. Can you tell me what is my cash balance at the end of the year? Please pause the video and tell me the cash balance. See, why mutual fund is a financial liability to you? Okay, tell me. Is this mutual fund is an equity or a financial liability from the mutual fund perspective? liability no financial liability because today you collected 10 crore into 10 is it a equity or liability for you ah, because you can't avoid payment of this you got into a contractual obligation any point of time anybody coming and telling give me my units back you have to pay that means if you prepare a balance sheet of a mutual fund on the asset side you have got asset on the liability side what do you have you have got only financial liability. Can you can you have any balance sheet like this? Financial liability on one side, asset on the other side. Somebody will ask you, where is your equity? So the units into the face value, what is that? No, that is your equity. Or whatever you might have. Financial liabilities you may have for small, other than the, whatever you have obliged to pay to the shareholders, that is not your financial liability. You might have taken some expenses are there some you might have done some cleaning and maintaining expenses that becomes financial liability huh. uh. uh. they will be no they will not have equity no. see if it is a listed that means it cannot be open fund oh, okay that open ended they are listed Ah, but whatever they have, they, it is not a financial liability. You can't classify it as a financial liability. Because if you classify what you have as a mu mu mutual fund, 
Ah. Fine. Whoever, whoever, whatever they collect, this units, is it nothing but like a equity? Is it not like an equity? By default, if somebody says, ah, whatever scheme, ultimately, it is only you collect to different different schemes, no? So whatever you collect, it will be your equity only. How can it be a financial liability? But if you go through apply the definition, it becomes a financial liability. That's why it is an exception given to them. Okay. Yeah, give me the cash balance. Finding difficult. Ah, that is different because I am just asking cash balance. Let us work out working note one. Okay. What all things do you have got? What is your opening cash? What 51,000? One part, I think it's correct. You have got opening cash balance, no? 51,000 is correct, but it's 10 lakh 51,000. See, I'll tell you. Oh, okay, let us start doing. How much is the opening cash in hand? How much did you receive money? One crore? You received one crore, right? Huh? Ah. Eight lakh, no. You think opening you got ten lakh. You think of a balance sheet, no. Actually, this is a balance sheet job, balance sheet game here. You got ten. One crore you got. How much cash remained in hand? You invested ninety-eight lakhs. Two lakh remain. Next. You received dividend. You passed an entry bank account debit to dividend. And it is a balance sheet game huh? again here. Next, you received interest on government security as and when they do is it. So, 8 lakh rupees into 7 percent. You received interest on 9 percent debentures as and when it is due. You received interest on 10 percent quoted debentures as and when it is due. Now, you got and there is some operating expenses you paid 5 lakh. So, the total closing cash balance is 10 crore, 10 lakhs 51,000. Now tell me where it went. What is 8 lakhs? Did that the second part of the question? No? There are two questions. Also find out. Be careful. This is question 1. They didn't tell you question. This is question 1. This is question 2. Ah, be careful. Huh? Ah, then you didn't consider this. You minus 8 lakhs. That's why you got left 51,000. Clear, right? And there are two questions, sir. sir. Second calculation of the NAV before dividend. Okay, how much is your cash in hand? 10 lakh 51. We calculated from working note 1. Okay. Then what is the value of the equity? 80, how? 80 beginning when you invested. 80 lakhs is the beginning when you invested. Now, what is the value? They told no, each of the share you invested at 160. At the end of the year, it has 175. So, total value is 87 lakh 50,000 rupees. 50,000 now equity shares you invested, right? No, 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 no. Equity shares and 10% debentures are quoted at 175 and 90% respectively. Respectively, they say no. They will trick you like this only. You see the next version of these questions. Government security at par only. Unlisted security also at par only. Now, how much is my listed debentures? 90% of the value. They told me all the values properly. So, this is all assets I have got and the expenses what I incurred, I paid it. If it, I would not have paid, it would, I would have directed as an accrued liability and my cash balance would have been more. I made, it's all balance sheet, huh? this particular thing. I have got units, 10 lakhs because there is no additional investment happened, nobody redeemed also. So, I have got NAV 11.551. Clear? 
Okay, so now what is my second part of the question? After declaring dividend, what is my NAV? Easy. What happened after declaring? What difference it made? Cash went out. Okay, so total your value of the assets fell down. This was your NAV net assets value before dividend. Net assets. You paid a dividend. Actually, cash. Cash went out. So your net assets is 1,7,000. Your number of units remain the same. NAV per unit is 10.751. Alternatively, you could have calculated like this. What is your NAV before dividend? 11 point. 581, right? 551. Minus 0.8. It is the cost, it is the dividend is per unit. NAV before dividend is 11.551 less dividend 0 0.80. 10.7. Which one? Same. No number of units remain same. The Yes. Alternatively, it is 11.551 minus the dividend what you pay, 10.751. I will move to the next question. Okay, next question is marked important because this has come in your old syllabus question. Let us understand. It is exactly similar to this, but there is some catch. Based on the following information, estimate the NAV on per unit basis of a regular income scheme of a mutual fund okay regular income is dividend based something they give you regular income so they must be investing in some regular thing listed share at the cost 40 lakh rupees 40 x dividend now cash in hand is 2.76 so they have not told me whether the crore or lakh so it is whatever in the absence of any information bonds and debentures are at cost of above Bonds not listed and not quoted is 2.96. So I got a breakup here. 8.96 has got a two breakup. 2.5 unlisted. And balance 8.96 minus 2.5, 6.46 is listed. Other fixed interest securities. Dividend accrued. You got some dividend but not received. Amount payable on shares is 13.54. And expenditure accrued is 1.76. Maybe call money. Okay, they, might, they have called you. You are not at risk. Liability for you. Current realizable value of the fixed income security of face value 100 is 96.5. Fixed income securities. There are some fixed income securities, no? So, you have to find out the value today. Number of units. Rupees 10 face value each 2 lakh 75. They give you number of units issue. All listed equity shares were purchased at a time when the market portfolio index was 12,500 and today it is 19,775. Calculate proportional. We have already done this type of things in derivative chapter. So you can find out today's market price. Assuming it, the share moved in tandem with the sensex or nifty. There has been a diminution of 15% in the unlisted bond and debenture valuation. So, the 2.5 into 15% less, 85%. The listed bonds and debenture carry a market value of 7.5 lakhs on NAV date. That, that balancing figure was there. No, its total market value is 7.5. Operating expenses paid during the year is 2.24. Cash balance comes down. Follow? Yes. So, what did they ask me? Here is the question. First question. First part of the thing, the question starts with calculate NAV per unit on regular. So, this is the time when you invested initially. Now, on this day, which is what is my NAV? How to find out NAV? Find out the total net assets value at mark to market. There are by 2,75,000 units. You get NAV. Okay, now you have to tell me one by one. We will do it together. What is my equity share value? Look into the question and every single thing you should be knowing. Huh? You should not leave anything. What is the value of equity shares? Okay. 
sorry no what is the value closing value of my equity shares sorry see what was the price at which you invested the total value of investment was 40 40 63.92 see when you invested 40 the sensex was 12500 today 19975 what is the value so you do 40 into 19975 divided by 12500 correct so you got the total value of the investment 63.92 crores or lakhs ah accrued dividend we didn't receive it no sorry and then my cash balance would have gone and accrued dividend would have left out today my accrued dividend is there in the balance sheet no it has got no relation no accrued dividend has got no relationship dividend is received then see again this is my closing market price this must be after declaration of dividend cut off and all whatever that means the dividend information is, we are assuming that it is reflected here Ah, no it has got no listed shares at cost x dividend okay they said without dividend okay after dividend the market price is settled at Yes, now tell me what is my cash in hand? Can you tell me what is my cash in hand? Yes, 2.76, right? Do you find any other thing related to the cash? Any item related to the cash? So what I should do with the operating expenses? I should deduct, right? Okay, but the study material they have done without deducting. The practice manual and MTP, both the places, same question. They are not done. Okay, this is an inconsistency. Okay, alternatively you could have said 2.76 minus. So this is in rupees in, we can assume it to be crores. See, these are all inconsistency. To make you confused, first of all, is it a rupees in lakhs or rupees in crores? They have not told you. Followed? Now you incurred operating 2 point lakhs, they said very specifically. Okay, that lakhs is more than the operating expenses what you incurred, 2.24. Okay, we can assume it to be 2.76 lakhs and direct 2.24, correct? How much it comes to? 0.52 we can actually work out with 0.52 but they have ignored it so what we can assume is in examination they will remove the operating expenses follow so let us consider that they have removed it from the examination okay let us work out what they have done in the practice manual these are old syllabus question both in mtp also rtp also they ignored it 2.76 is not 7.65 it is 2.760 2.76 clear no no confusion no here because in one of the problem they directed all the expenses paid and all from the cash in hand here they have not done it but we know we have to deduct it full time exam they may not give that operating expense only third what is my bonds and debentures unlisted bonds what is the value of unlisted bonds Diminution, right? So, what is the original value? 
2.5 into 85 percent 2.125 what is the value of listed bond they said balancing figure which remained at par 8.96 minus 2.5 this is the original value of listed bond sorry market price bond is at a face value but i am not supposed to do mark to market which one because i may sell and buy bonds at any point of time no? i see that there is my inverse relationship between interest rate and the bond so if i find the interest rates are falling something i will not keep holding this bond no i just sell it off if i anticipate interest rates are going to raise or fall so what are the value of listed bonds have they told you anything Listed bonds and debentures carry 7.5 lakhs. Straight away they told you, they have given you 7.5. And other fixed interest securities are quoted. Now, current realizable value of fixed income security, first point. Face value 100 is 96.5. So, what you assume is 9.75, what you have invested is at 100 face value. Today its value is 96.5. So, 9.75 is 100, 96.5 is how much? 9.40875. Clear no students? Actually, it is an easy question, but simply they have tricked the day, not many things. They could have given, if you compare to the previous question, what is the difference? Plain, right? But they have given you in a different, different ways. Accrued dividend, you still didn't receive it, 1.95. And there are some call money, which you didn't pay, 13.54. And there's some expenditures, which is accrued, 1.76. If at all, you would not, that whatever operating expenses you paid, if you would not have deducted from here, at least you should have deducted from accrued expenses. But accrued expenses also they have considered same. Because you can assume that, okay, these are all the fresh expenses, old accrued expenses, very less. So my assumption is, okay, it should have been paid, these are fresh expenses. Or you eliminate full 7.76 balance you remove from the cash. So, my total net effects is 72.36375 lakhs or crores. I believe it is in lakhs, huh? rupees in lakhs, huh? because my units are in lakhs. Divided by number of units 2.75 lakhs. NAV is 26.3141. Now students will wonder what about that what are operating expenses. Now, but remember, there are two possibilities. If at all they give in the examination, three things is okay. First of all, they may not give you in the examination. If at all it gives, you can do two things. But this here, uh, not directing is riskier. You please direct it, no worries. Let us do right thing. Huh? All your, you didn't pay something like cleaning charges. You incurred expenses, but you didn't pay. Done? Yes, we'll move to the next question. Next question also we have marked the important because these questions have not come till now in the exam. Well, first part of the question has come. Equity shares is given. Oh, sorry, not a question. This is the practice manual solution. I just wanted to show you that this and liabilities 1.76 that Operating expenses, they did not know where they deducted. Despite they have given both in MTP also, RTP also, same 26.314 is the answer. Okay, next question, this is also marked important. Based on the above information, calculate the NAV, regular income scheme, listed X shares, cash in hand is given 1.23, bonds and debentures at cost of these listed, not listed, and quoted is 1. 
other fixed interest securities is 4.5 dividend accrued is 0.8 amount payable on shares is 6.32 expenditure accrued same up to here now number of units is 10 lakhs uh, okay here rupees in crores and number of units face value 20 lakh number of units remember be careful now current assets realizable value of the fixed security is same 106. The listed shares were purchased when the index was 1000. Today the index is 2000. Value of listed bonds and debentures at the NAV date is 8. There has been diminution to 20% listed, other fixed interest cost security that cost. Did you see here? Where is accrued expense? Sorry, not accrued expense, the operating cash, operating cost. Clear? It's easy, right? Okay, now you tell me using your calculator quickly. So take it as a homework then. Because it's the same format. What is my value of the equity shares? You can take it as a homework. What is my value of the equity shares here? 46. Cash in hand? 1.23. Bonds and debentures? Eight. Then unlisted. Huh? They have the value of the listed bonds and dementors is eight. This is four point three. Out of this one is separate. No, listed. It doesn't matter. Balancing figure. But this doesn't matter. Four point three minus one is three point three. Its value is eight. What is unlisted? 0 0.8, 1 minus 1 into 80 percent, this is a 20 percent diminution and other fixed interest securities, other fixed interest at cost, what is the value today, how did you get, how did you get, How did you get? How did you get? Tell me. Okay. This is the okay. So this is one as per the previous catch. Okay. So this is the catch. Okay. So what they have done? They have taken here. Can you see here at the end? Other fixed interest securities are at a cost. So you have considered this at a 4.5 only at a cost. This is the other fixed interest securities, right? This is at a cost because they told you very specifically, no. Now that's one catcher. Huh? Then dividend accrual will remain same. Amount payable on shares will remain same. You get total assets. You deduct the expenditure. You find out the NAV. Clear? You can take it as a number. Equity shares for 46. Cash in hand 1.23. Listed bonds and debentures. Unlisted bonds 1 into 0.8. Yes. The catch lies here. Ulta. Somebody will take an assumption. No. How the mutual fund can carry some assets at a cost? They are supposed to do mark to market. I will do the market based on this. Current realizable value of the fixed income securities of the face value. I will take based on this. Which one? To confuse you. But if we look into both the questions, can we conclude that I can take any assumption? Because previous question also they have given me. They have done that. Way. So it's left to you. So let's see. They have, that's why I marked both things are important. And both things I gave you together. They are not given, doesn't matter. See, you need to understand they are, didn't give you at a cost. They have given no other fixed interest securities at cost. But the sentence they didn't give that other fixed securities are at cost. Here they added one sentence at the end, right? So it is up to your choice. I would say because be careful in the exam. Look what they are going to give. If at all they give you same sentence there, 
if you see the previous question they didn't give you this sentence previous question this sentence was not there ulta this sentence was there correct first sentence was this no this sentence was not there why somebody they have to give extra they want you to assume that the fixed securities are at cost so now i have marked both the question important you understand the difference in both the questions if at all this sentence comes in the examination this question comes you treat this at cost of 4.5 only don't extrapolate it if this sentence is missing then you extrapolate and put that 4.75 whatever you have got clear so total assets will be so much so you have got two expenses amount payable on shares accrued expenses net assets number of units and then is 271.2 you have done the answer no you got the cash no students here ah see in practice manual and see operating expense they didn't address see, this simply creates a confusion for us now but if you ask me i would have taken that 105 into 196 something no that i would have gone okay so we'll move to the next question this is an rtp question please mark this question also important because this is all one type of question we are done with this because any one of these three questions may come Ah, no this is 40th question this is question number 40 which i put later somewhere then i realized no this is your similar to this question please mark this question important it has come in your recent mtp uh, recent rtp question number 40 now following is the s fund scheme okay there is one fund you have got investment in shares at the cost which all investment they have given you five companies see they have mixed it huh? we initially we started like this only correct now they have given you a combined invest in bond which is giving you fixed income listed and unlisted they give you listed number of bond 14 percent rate of interest and all the stuff they give outstanding number of units through in crores cash and cash equivalents expenses payable outstanding liability this is cce cash and cash equivalent three market expectation on the listed bonds is 8.842 percent why they have given you market expectation on the listed bonds what do you understand market expectation on the listed bonds Chalo, we'll proceed further. You have to tell me that because at this point of time, this is one question mark. What is this? We don't know. You are assuming that we are reading in the examination. The fund has incurred the following expenses: consultancy expenses, office expenses, advertisement expenses. Okay, it is in lakhs. And what is cash in hand? Three crores. Correct. And they have incurred some expenses now how much is the total 520 plus 180 plus 48 sorry 300 lakhs uh, let us see you know i might have received some dividend or income particulars related to each of the sector as follows so index on the rate of purchase index on the rate of valuation okay so that means i go back to the question i know the valuation of these many five shares done required calculate net asset value of the fund calculate net asset value per unit how net asset value is total assets total net assets divided by the number of units you get the net asset per unit determine the net asset return annualized okay if period of consideration is four years and the fund has distributed rupees 2 per unit as cash dividend during the same period calculate rupees in crores up to three decimal points now this is the percent return which is we are going to come next now returns we are going to discuss we will i'll tell you what to do now to calculate nav they have given me the value market value 
what is my market value of investment in listed bonds unlisted have they told you if they don't tell you what you will consider cost 14 but what is the cost of what is the market value of listed bonds huh? Uh, so how do you, how do you find out the value market value of listed bond? Twenty four plus the eight for eight for percentage uh, expectation. What do you do? Ah, uh, it's not plus. How can you add plus? It's not crore. No, it is a percentage. What is the market value? My simple question is: What is the market value of listed bonds today? If the market expectation is eight point eight four two percent. Ah, how did you get that? Come on, think. Huh? Yeah, first chapter. How did you get it? Yeah, exactly. Now I want you to apply that first chapter. Huh? It is a number of yes, students. So at least okay. Now you understood now. Now what happened? Where is my question? Yes, this is a perpetual bond. Agree? Why? Because you make an assumption that this is a perpetual bond. How to value a perpetual bond? See, fifteen thousand is my face value into fourteen percent. You get the interest income. On this income, you divide by 14%, you get again face value because your expectation was 14%. If you get 15,000 is the value of the bond multiplied by 8,000 number of bonds, you are not getting 24, you are getting 12. But they said value is 24, that means this is print mistake, it should have been 16. Exam is not going to come, Arjun, and if at all it comes. Okay, it might come, this might come, but we know that this is exact ditto. If it is other than this, some print mistake, you can expect some grace marks. Ah, but here it may be an issue, see. Or ulta, they may not give you, then finish, no? Then what you do? Ah, then what you have done? 24 divided by 15,000 into 1 crore, 16,000 number of shares. That also possible, right? They may not give you this. No, they may not give. That definitely, they will not uh, play in the exam because they know that they have to give the grace marks. But what is my point is, be prepared for all the scenario. Know that this is mistake. In exam, either they may not give you, or they may give you correctly sixteen thousand. Don't get confused where it came from. Okay, that's it. And now one more catch here is this expenses they have not considered. Fund incurred the expenses, they have ignored it fully. So in the exam, a question comes and we have seen one places expenses was given, they didn't consider. Second question, exactly similar, they didn't give the expense. Now what do you expect in the exam? They will give the expense or they will not give the exam. A headache is there, not there. If they give, no. Let us see. See, if it was one of question, we would have ignored it. But two two places, and that two in the recent MTP, RTP, May twenty one RTP, they have given you specifically expense, but they didn't consider this expenses. So I told you, whenever you have to do certain take certain judgments, now you have to take a judgment. Should I deduct or not? I deduct. Whenever you have to take a judgment, give priority to what they have done in the study material. If it was one of cases, you apply your common sense, take the rules, do the right thing. Where they have managed. Operating expenses were there. 
what was that question where the operating expense was minus where operating expense was minus where ha huh. question number 5 they have minus it correct okay now which one you will give preference okay if this same question comes okay then we can take it huh? but again what to tell what to tell now because the exact very clear cut because that question number 5 they said operating expense was paid okay you take a decision you make you make a deduction that makes more sense they have paid no they have paid this actually makes sense again when there is a confusion when there is a clarity both equally weighs together what we have to do finally we leave everything aside then we we'll go with our common sense that is your ultimate guide in the darkness in they have incurred no otherwise it should have been out uh, accrued expenses no if you have incurred and if you are not it paid if you have got a cash that means you pay otherwise out accrued expenses are there you deduct it and you add to it it's a balance sheet game it's not a continuous liability it's not outside the balance sheet clear accrued because you don't know no this is is it an accrued last year and you paid this year office expenses was already accrued it's sitting there in the accrued and paid it is accounting right accounting board so ultimate confusion is yes. there is a very clear cut to two different standard four questions we solved in four questions two questions one question they did three questions one question was not there two questions they have not ignored let us deduct it yeah. let us calculate the net asset value what is my asset value i will do one by one because they have given me specifically pharma what is my pharma value 158 into today index is 500 when you invested in net index was 300 so i said 263 266.333 then i go to the construction 62 into 490 by 275 i'll go to the service sector it sector real estate sector so i get the value of the total shares now what is my value of listed bonds investment in bonds point number 2 what is the value see now 15000 rupees is its face value and at that time the uh, what is it called uh, market price and expectation was same into 14% is what i am going to get perpetual i am going to get a perpetual interest forever 15000 into 14% and if my today's market expectation is 8.83% divided by 0.8832 am i not getting present value of all the future cash flows perpetual bond valuation chapter number 1 bond valuation okay i got bond value per bond value per bond multiplied by i want a total value how much is the total 16000 It is not eight thousand. Follow. So you get the total value of the bond thirty-eight. Understand here. The calculation is simple. What they are trying to tell, what they are assuming, this bond is a listed. This bond is a perpetual bond. Why? Term is not given. And whether the repayment is going to happen or not, we don't know. You can't assume it to be a zero coupon bond because they are giving you a percentage. unconventional bond also you cannot assume so only assumption is perpetual bond if it is a perpetual bond this is the perpetual amount of interest i am going to get what is the value of it divide it by 8.842% ke expectation not 1 plus per bond i get value per bond how many bond 16000 how did you get 16 it was it not 8 yes it was a print mistake So be careful in the exam to look for the print mistakes. Cross verify again. The moment you get bond, no, you just see whether that number of bonds is matching or no. Otherwise, what happens? No, you end up getting thirty-eight divided by two, nineteen lakhs, nineteen crores. Actually, it should send. You should, it should make some some 
wrong what is the problem see when the market expectation was 14 percent the value of bond was 24 when the market expectation came down should the value of bond increase or decrease increase no and if you take 8000 bond it comes to 19 into 8 percent no? 15,000 into 0.14 divided by 0.8842 into 8,000 bonds. It comes to 19, no, half of this. If you treat 8,000 bonds, it comes to 19. How can it is possible that when the market expectation fell down, your value of the bond or portfolio bond also fell down? That means the problem is that number of bonds. Clear? Okay, unlisted at a cost only. And these are gem questions. Huh? Clear no Melvin? The logic behind why we have to consider to be confidently considered to be 16,000. Ah. That's what increased now. From 24, it got increased to 38, right? Provided you took this as 16,000. If you take that as 18,000, it will come to 19. How can it be possible? When my expectation came down, my discounting factor came down, value should increase. It should not come down. Huh? What is that? I mean, the interest rate increases, market value increases, no inverse relationship. Security valuation chapter we discussed. Why? Because the discounting factor, the lower the interest rate, Higher the market, higher the interest rate of discount because it's the dividing factor. No? So, how much is the cash? Three. Okay. Alternatively, you could have deducted the expenses, operating expenses, because you test your knowledge 19. They deducted that 5 lakh rupees operating expenses. You could you can do it, but they didn't do it. Leave it. So you got 388.209. How much is the expenses payable? Alternatively, if you don't deduct it, at least Expenses payable you increase, assuming that you didn't pay. That also you they didn't do it. That means they totally ignored it. Maybe in the examination they will remove that content. That is the high probability if you ask me. What is the possibility? Whether they give the expenses or they don't give the expenses, I say they may not give the expenses. So your NAV value you got. NAV per unit. Okay, so we can do it the next step. This is let us set value for the fund. That's it. 788.209. That's the second question now. Okay, I can move further. So NAV value per unit is nothing but okay. So just before that, just see the solution because we have done just exactly as per that. So they have they have considered 38. Huh? And see the calculation what they have done. Ah, see the confusion. Huh? Can you see? 16,000 I gave. Did you see their calculation? How did they get 38? They did, they did not consider 18, 18, 8,000 bonds. In their calculation, they didn't consider 8,000 bonds. What did they say? 14 percent divided by 8 percent into value of the portfolio. Based on the total interest factor, 20, ah, 24 is 14 percent, what is 8 percent? But if you understand the concept of how did you get 38, it is actually you have got a number of, it is a perpetual bond, its value was 16,000. And they didn't give anywhere. Understood? Okay, and the rest, these calculations are same. Cash balance remained intact, expenses also intact. That means that management expenses they ignored. Chalo. Second, NAV per unit 781, you have by 8.4, you get 92. Now they are asking, what is my return? See, they are asking, what is annualized return? Assuming this, uh, what is that called? Uh, this particular bond, mutual fund scheme was there from past four years. So when they begin, what was their opening NAV? 93 what you got is their closing NAV, right? What was their opening NAV? 
as I told you. Students, you are clear now. See, till now, this is what we were doing at this point of time. Now we are entering into another field called the returns, which is a critical, which is the most important thing. Now they are telling me, look, this fund was there from past four years. Now there are two types of returns. One is called HPR, holding period return. That means what is my return for cumulative four years from the beginning till now. Second is annualized return. That means what is per annum return. Follow? Now, for, for one year. So to find out, how to find out my return, tell me. Can you give me the equation for finding out the return? What is the return? Equation. Opening and AV minus closing divided by opening. Plus, if at all this company has distributed dividend, it is my return, right? Is it not what we are doing in portfolio management? Return from a share, opening share price minus closing share price divided by opening share price plus dividend received from the company. Exactly the same way we are going to do. Do I have this information? No. Do I have this information? Do I have this info? Where I know? Ah, exactly. We have to calculate. No. Do I have a dividend information? I have. They told me how much dividend was declared. Yes. So let us start with the working note of opening and ending. Very easy. What is the value of shares? 420. What is the value of bond? 38. You can you not know, do in this table format. Huh? You can straight away do total value of assets. They have already given you here. 420 plus 38, 458 divided by 8.4 gives you 54.52. Now we are coming to the fourth one and they say look company has distributed 2 rupees per unit. And remember, uh, previous workings and all crore rupees in crores, uh, three decimal points. Uh. If you observe, we have done that three decimal points. Previous asset value. Okay. Let us calculate the annualized return. How we, what is my annualized return? 93 is my closing value minus opening value plus how much dividend they gave? 2 rupees per unit, right? per year, every year they give 2 rupees per unit into 4 years divided by 54.52 into 100. This gives you return per 4 years. What is 1 year? So I get 21.31 percent. They say no, the share price has given thousand percentage return over a period of 10 years. That is nothing but 2000 year 2020, 2020 value minus 2010 value, divided by 2010 value into 100. This says that this, this share price has given you 100,000 percent return over 10 years. How much per year it has given me into 1 by 10. Clear? Easy, right? Return. That's it. But important question, huh? please mark. If you want to practice this, understand all the differences. What is the? This is for full four years. No, this return. Which one? This is the third question. No? Third question has got no relation to the first two questions. Or no, that's my assumption. That's what we understand. I don't want to mix the third part with the first part. Yeah. Ah, as you understood, but this is what they have done different way. 
yes you can alternately say this year dividend or that cash balance is there after dividend that also you can assume three crore cash balance after dividend okay so first part is clear introduction nav is clear how to calculate whatever they give you this said that said you can do it okay now we'll come to the important thing called the returns there are only actually this it was also a simple the real challenge came when they started to give the reverse they used to give the return and say find out the nav value that's what you need to master otherwise finding return is a very simple job in portfolio management we have mastered same way now returns will come in the form of short horizon short term period dividend reinvestment plan because sometimes when i will get the return again i'll buy the units only long term and indifference return or expense ratio short term horizon what is my short term holding period return holding period it is a change in nav which is nothing but opening nav minus closing nav plus income distribution plus capital gain distribution because what happen suppose they will have going to get some capital gains they have got some capital gains see income distribution means you made every year you receive the dividend see what your mutual fund is going to do they are going to invest in shares some of the shares give them dividend that distribution dividend they will pass on to you some of the shares they will sell off they get the capital gain some portion of capital gain also they will pass on to you so this is called a capital gain distribution so whatever you receive divided by the opening balance opening price gives you holding period return for the full period it may be for 6 months same thing very similar to into forex we did the premium fr minus sr divided by sr it is for the period 6 months 3 months now i want to annualize i'll convert for the full year same story question number 8 nav on 1st april is 50 30th june that means after 3 months 51.25 income distribution 0.5 capital gain distribution is so much calculate the hpr and annual return assuming entry and exit load to be 1% this is an example so if my entry load and exit load is 0.5 what is my when i entered what was my nav what was my cost i need opening nav right what is my opening nav 50 50 what they quoted will i get at 50 and generally returns who will find out this this is from whose perspective in portfolio management returns we found out no from whose perspective from the company's perspective or from the investor's perspective here also we are doing same thing now nav from whose perspective you will find out investment, investment but actually who is doing that who is doing that who is publishing in nav company so who is having that information company so we have done nav calculation from the company's perspective but when it comes to returns don't think that returns company is trying to find out even company also might find out but it's primarily from the investors perspective how much investors got like in portfolio management we found out no so shares in returns so what is my opening nav 50 but you as an investor will you get at 50 opening at what price you purchased 50 was the quoted what was your cost plus 1% right entry loan today its closing nav is 51.25 will you get 51.25 no what is your closing nav 51.25 minus 1% This is called the entry load, exit load, front load, back load. Follow? Okay. First working note one, we will calculate the selling price, net selling price. So this is your opening and ending. And repurchase price, exit load. Okay. This is this working is done from the perspective of company. If you are talking in from a perspective of an investor, he says opening NAV, closing NAV. What they are telling? Look, initially I sold at fifty plus point five, fifty point five. I sold the units. Follow now. This calculation see should be very clear. It is the same terminology. It is a different terminology. Sorry, from two different perspective. 
if you are talking from the perspective of a company company says look i am selling you at 50 plus entry load this is my selling price at what price i will buy back from you it is repurchase price 51.25 minus exit load so from an investor's perspective this is my opening nav this is my closing nav this is the price that i am going to buy this is the price that i am going to sell no confusion no because in the study material you will find this type of uh, terminology selling price repurchase price you can in the bracket you write opening in navy so that is easy for you to remember because if you talk about selling and repurchase it becomes confusing correct that I can proceed further. I can proceed further. Yes. So, what is your HPR? HPR is nothing but 50.7375 closing NAV minus 50.5 opening NAV plus you received in dividend 0 0.5 plus capital gain distribution 0 0.35 divided by 50.5. You get 21. One five three percent. This is the which is your holding period. What is your holding period here? Three months, April to June. So what is your per annum into twelve by three? This is for three months. See, concept is very easy, very fundamental. We have already covered, correct? That's what even I was not liking. Means there was nothing special. See, now where is they started doing that? NAV, they mix something. Okay. In here, they used to give you the closing price and they closing returns, they used to tell and say, calculate the opening NAV. He lost his documents and he don't know what, what price he purchased. That is interesting. So for this fundamental this concept should be very clear to you. What do you mean by holding period in the returns? What do you mean by annualized return? Wait. Why to add? Because the entry load is something like entry to enter. I have to pay something extra. So if my NAV is 50 rupees, I will not sell you at 50. To enter plus 1% commission, you have to pay me. It's called an entry load or a front load, front enter. What is exit? Suppose 50 is my closing NAV price. I will not buy back from you or you can't sell back to me at 50. I will deduct my commission of 1% and say give you at 49. Doesn't matter, no, one and the same, right? Like if you are talking from the perspective of a company, you say, look, I will sell you at 50 plus commission. You say, I will buy from you at 50 plus commission. Both are talking same, opening. If I say, I will buy back from you at 50 minus 1%, you say, I will sell to you at 50 minus 1%. Both are talking same, closing in NAV. Company and the investor. So, it is only terminology you have to understand. Point here is, if you want to enter into the scheme, you have to pay 1% entry load. If you want to exit from the scheme, you have to you are getting deducted 1% exit load. Now, whose perspective you decide now? You be careful and understand. Let us understand again, we will not have any prejudice pressure from both of us. So, your per annum return is 8.612, a decent return. Today's day, 8% if you get. Clear, no? So, we will move to the question number 9. This is an example question. Then question number 9 is your test your knowledge question. A mutual fund has got net assets of 20 rupees, rupees 20 at the beginning of the month, made an income and capital gain distribution of 0.2753 and at the end 
with the NSSS value of 20.6. So it's a NAV. What is monthly return? This is one month period. No, they have given you at the beginning of the month NAV. How did you get this 20 rupees? Yeah, at the beginning the NAV was 20. How did you get this 20? Net assets minus asset minus liability divided by units. You calculate. We already did this. At the end of the year, again we did all mark to market calculation. We got this. Yes. Yes. 20. This is your holding period monthly return because this is for one month. This was opening period and closing at the month. Closing period. 20.06. Closing NAV. This is the opening NAV plus the distributed dividend, the distributed capital gain. 20 is the closing, opening year. Holding period return, no? HPR is 6.37 per month. All out. See, now in the website and all, you will get holding period return and all. You understand where that those things are coming from. Okay, done. I will move further. Next question. A mutual fund has got net asset value, NAV of 16 at the beginning, made income, capital gain distribution, and then ended the NAV at 16. Monthly and annual return. Here, you have to calculate annual loss. Easy question, practice manual. And if this type of Questions you solve, no? you will also get that asara, asara manamava on this chapter, correct? What? Why is sir, sir wasted our time? I would have spent on some other important subject. But wait. Huh? Ah. What? This man, you can't expect me. You, but mutual fund questions are going to come, huh? they are all written backward calculation type of questions, very beautiful questions, you will enjoy it. Done? Okay. So holding period return is 9.375, 16.08 minus 16 plus 0.4.3 and annual return is into 12 by 1, 11.25 percent per annum, this is per month. Okay, one more question we'll do because the question number 12 we marked important. It might have some um, analysis. We need to spend time. On question number 12. Done? Okay. SBA mutual fund has got an NAV of 8.5 at the beginning of the year. Be careful. At the end of the year, NAV increased to 9.1. Meanwhile, fund distributed 0 0.9, 0 0.75 capital gain. What is the fund's return during the year? Had this distribution reinvested at an average NAV of 8.75 and 200 units were purchased originally. And you, whenever you got the distribution, no dividend, you reinvested all the dividends. What is the return in such? So, first part of the question, we know it. We don't need time. To calculate. So my return is 26.47 percent. Correct? How did I get this? Opening minus clo closing minus opening plus the all the distributions. Uh, now second thing, yes, understand it. Dividend redistribution reinvestment plan. How that returns to be calculated? Now what happened? How much income you received? Can you tell me how much money you receive? You are as an investor. Because this is from an investor's perspective we are doing now. Company says, okay, you invest, I have paid cash to you. Whether you buy back from me, you don't buy, that is your choice. No. But one investor does what? Whatever cash he receives, he will buy the units again. Now, his total number of units will be higher at the end of the year. So, what is the return in such case? First, dividend reinvestment. How much money he will get? Can you tell me? How much rupees he is going to get from the uh, mutual fund? How many units he are holding? How many number of units that investor is holding? 200. How much dividend he got? 
0.9 and 0.75, correct? So he got total of 330 rupees. How many and what he did with this money? He reinvested in the company at what NAV? 8.75, some average NAV at, or opening NAV it is. Yeah, somewhere in the middle of the year, no. 8.5 was the beginning and NAV is changing every day. Somewhere at the middle of the year, 330 rupees, the moment he received, you purchase units. How many units you got? 37.71 units. 37.71 units. Correct. And what is the closing number of units he is having? He is having total 231.71 units at the hand, in hand. Now calculate holding predator. See, you are Opening NAV is how much? 8.5. How many units you had? 200 units. This is the opening investment. What is your total value of the portfolio? You didn't receive any dividend. Why? Because the dividend, whatever you received, you reinvested. So you have the NAV value is 9.1 into you have got total 237.71 units. So your total closing portfolio value is this much. So your return comes to 27.24 percent per annum because this is one year data. Clear? Easy? Understood? Understood, no? None of the points we have got any doubt, right? Now you asked me whether this question can come, previous one. Now what I can say, no, the next question what we are going to solve, no, that may come. But you can handle it. So no, next question is not 12. Huh? This is done. We will move to question number 36. It is a typical MTP question, typical examination type of question. Okay, so we'll move to the done. Well, then. question number thirty-six because this is some MTB question which is placed somewhere later. Let us solve it together. And this question may come for examination. We'll not mark it important because you know it. It's very easy when you practice. You can do it. Orange purchased two hundred units of oxygen mutual fund at forty-five on thirty-first December. In two thousand ten, he received one rupee dividend and capital gain two three. Calculate the return for the period of one year and this may change in the exam. See, this is a very plain, very simple question. This question may come in the exam, but not as plain as it. What they may say? They may say only for six months here. May say calculate annualized return. Something like that they are going to give you. So calculate, okay, no computation, straight away calculation only. Return for the period of one year, assuming NAV at the end of the year is 48. All right, no, what Christy you may get it. June. Calculate the return for the period of one year, assuming NAV on 31st December was 48, same. And all the dividends and capital gains were invested at an average return of 46 per unit with no taxation. Okay. In exam, they may say with the taxation. Then that is what uh, this is an indication. In my examination, they may give you with the taxation. Then whatever returns you are going to get, no. For that, it was what you are going to get. How much number of units? How many units were there? Now, how many units you are holding? 200 units. No, 200 units into 3 when you get into 0 0.7. This is what you cash you get net of tax. Followed? Yes, that is it. Otherwise, plain question. Please do it. Please pause the video and do it within 5 minutes. Okay, let us, uh, let us check the answer. Okay, fund returns 48 minus 45, 1 plus 3, 30.33, right? Huh? 30.33. Now, what happened with you, Arjun? 3 plus 3 divided by 45, 30.33. What happened? Uh, 
calculation of mistake. Okay. So second part of the question, how much income did you receive? Six hundred. And okay, before if at all they say with taxation. And now I need to do ah no. This my return is three into zero point seven. Return whatever I got, I just taxed. But here if there is no taxation because I have not yet sold it. It is an unrealized gain. Here also net of taxation into seventy percent. If at all they give additional units, I got fourteen forty six. So my holding period return is thirteen point six two percent. Simple question. They may give for four marks. But let us see. Is an easy. So in the next class we will continue with the question number. Okay, we have got two hundred thirteen point zero four. Question number twelve. Very important.